So this weekend, the highly anticipated Call of Duty Modern Warfare PC Beta is finally here. Now, to give you guys a bit of a head start, I have compiled a list of what are, in my opinion, the best settings for Modern Warfare based on my 6 or 7 hours of playtime in the closed beta. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the performance penalties of the different graphical settings that are in Modern Warfare. We're gonna look at the different audio settings. And finally, I'm also gonna show you guys a bit of a trick on how to get exactly the same mouse sensitivity across different games. So before you're gonna jump right into the multiplayer, you wanna go to options. Now under keyboard and mouse, you have your mouse sensitivity. Now the way I usually do the mouse sensitivity is I go into the game and then I try to find a wall like this one. And then I move my mouse from the left side of my mouse pad all the way to the right side of my mouse pad and try to stay as horizontal as possible. And then I try to get exactly the same amount of movement in uh, regardless of the game that I'm playing. So I, for example, have set up my mouse sensitivity that when I go all across my mouse pad, I should do exactly a 360. Now note that you don't actually have to try and get the correct number with this bar here. You can just type it in like this. So it's not like Battlefield. Now under mouse sensitivity, you also have the advanced tab where you'll find the vertical sensitivity multiplier. Now what this does is it allows you to kind of get a multiplier on the vertical movement of your mouse. So when you drag down on your sprays, you don't actually have to drag down so much. Now the aim down sight mouse sensitivity, I have on relative. However, I realized that this option really didn't do anything when I tried to change this in game. So if I had this on one and then I aim down sights and, and move my mouse, I got exactly the same movement as if I would have put this to five. So I'm not 100% sure if this is just bugged at the moment. Now, obviously you also want to make sure to have mouse acceleration as well as mouse filtering on zero and obviously make sure to disable enhanced pointer precision in Windows. Now, the movement tab is pretty much straightforward. You can just set up toggles or holds for the different behaviors. So we're just gonna jump ahead to the weapons tab where now you'll find the aim down side behavior. Also in here, I set the switch weapon minimum delay to zero in order to instantly switch between my primary and secondary weapon. And the other options are pretty much self-explanatory. Now in interface and audio, if you do not have a system key blocker, like on many Corsair keyboards, like the one I have, then you can set up the system key behavior to game um, in order to prevent the game to actually minimize your game if you accidentally press the Windows key. Pretty neat. Now under the general tab, you'll find the field of view option, which in my opinion should belong to the graphics option, but whatever, I guess. You can set up the field of view. I have it set to 90. You can also set a different ADS field of view. In my case, I want it to be exactly the same as the field of view I have if I'm not ADS. All right, guys. So something I noticed while I actually edited the video is that my field of view was sometimes kind of broken. So now I set it to 100 and set it. Oh, okay. So now it changes. You can see it in the background. But um, for some reason, uh, after you've joined certain game modes, maybe Ground War, or maybe also after you've been in a vehicle, like in a chopper, your field of view is just getting stuck at 60, uh, making it look completely horrible to play at that very low field of view. So if that happens to you, unfortunately, you're gonna have to leave the game and join back. Now scrolling down to content filters, you absolutely want to make sure to have world motion blur to disabled, because that's just horrible. It's gonna give you a headache. As well as the weapon motion blur. And I have this member also disabled. I mean, you can have this if you're a fan of dismembered bodies, but I mean, don't wanna get our videos uh, unmonetized on YouTube. So let's disable this. Now under telemetry, there's actually a few cool options for a game such as Modern Warfare. So you have a FPS counter, you can get the server latency as I have set it up. You can have like a GPU processing time, a CPU processing time, um, yeah, and a few other things. I mean, that's pretty neato to see in a new game and I really like these kind of telemetry options that they give you in game. Now let's finally move on to the graphics tab, which is probably the tab that you guys have been waiting for and came to this video for. First of all, you absolutely want to make sure that the render resolution is set to 100. Now, once I booted up the game, this was actually set to 80. So the game would actually look super blurry. Uh, what this basically does is that the game is being rendered at a lower resolution than your monitor is actually wide. So if you have this at 80, everything is just gonna be incredibly unsharp. You can even go further than 100, of course, which just basically um, 
results in some very, very expensive anti-aliasing going on. And I've actually made a bit of a comparison of doing 120 here instead of anti-aliasing and it does look really good, but on the other hand, it also uses a lot of performance. VSync you obviously want to turn off and in my case, I also disabled the custom frame rate limiter. Now let's hop right into the graphical benchmarks. Now I do have an i9-9900K clocked at 5GHz as well as an RTX 2080 graphics cards. Now the way I benchmarked this is I set everything to low and then I simply um, enabled some of these options here and benchmarked the performance drop that has resulted by increasing that setting. Now in the case of texture resolution, I personally just go to normal as I have about 7 FPS drop, which in my opinion is definitely worth the much upgraded graphics over low. Anisotropic filtering you can definitely set to high as this does not really impact your performance whatsoever. The same can be set for particle quality, bullet impact as well as tessellation. All of these can actually be set to the highest value and you won't be losing much performance at all. Now the shadow map resolution basically just gives you nicer shadows the higher you set it. Now as you can see I lose around 1 FPS by going from normal to high and then 6 by going to extra. However as you can see on screen the difference between high and extra really isn't negligible and to be honest you could probably just get away with setting this to normal. In my case I'm just gonna set it to high because I like the looks of the little bit sharper shadows. Now caching spot and sun shadows is definitely recommended to set to enable. Now ambient occlusion was actually one of the most surprising results that I got from this testing. Setting this to GTAO um, made me drop 9 FPS, MDAO 4 and finally both resulted in a massive 10 FPS drop. And considering that you really cannot see ambient occlusion in the real world, I mean if you're playing the game you're not gonna notice this, I would just recommend to have this disabled altogether. For particle lightning, interestingly, if you do set this to low, you're getting 5 FPS more compared to all of the other settings. Basically, there really isn't much of a difference between ultra high and normal in terms of performance. And honestly, I really think there is no big visual difference between these options. Now let's talk about anti-aliasing. Now if you set this to off, obviously you'll get the highest performance possible. However, the game looks very charred and there's really a lot of edges and corners that really are not very pleasing to the eye. Unfortunately, the anti-aliasing that is in this game doesn't really do a great job at producing a sharp image after anti-aliasing has been applied. So on screen you can see a comparison between the different anti-aliasing options. And obviously if you look at the first two then you can see that the scope looks absolutely horrible with all of these kind of pixelated stuff that kind of tries to make it blurry and it's just a lot of grain in there and it just doesn't look very nice. So you probably don't want to do off or filmic, which are probably the two most uh, performant options. But then you're looking at SMA two times, which is dropping in my case 22 FPS, which is quite significant in my opinion. But on the other hand, the image just looks so much nicer that not really selecting SMA or filmic SMA, which is actually my personal preference, is really difficult. Now the filmic strength you definitely want to set to 1 as this will make your peripheral vision which should be uh, kind of blurred look a much nicer compared to this kind of pixelated mess if you set this to 0. Finally the film grain you absolutely want to set to 0. Now in the audio tab there's actually a few little nuggets. For example there are a whole bunch of different audio mixes available to you. So let's listen in to the headphones one. Headphones 2, Headphones 3, The Infinity Ward Mix, Flat, Midnight Mode, And finally, theatrical.
Now, in my opinion, Headphones 1 definitely does sound the best in terms of getting where the enemies are. Like, if you compare it to the Midnight Mode, you basically don't hear anything in that one. Like, no footsteps, no real gun sounds, and everything's just very muffled and very, very tuned down. Now, also, I would recommend to set the music volume to 5 as well as the dialogue volume to 5 in order to not get the in-game announcer all over the top in your face whenever somebody gets a kill. Also, you can set if you want to have the old school hit marker sounds or the new Modern Warfare slightly lower sounding hit markers. And that pretty much wraps up the settings. Now, if you go to multiplayer, then you can actually hit the filter icon here next to quick play and you can select which kind of game mode you actually want to play. So you don't have to select all of these game modes if you don't want to play like Team Deathmatch or Demolition. You can just select the game modes that you like to play, go back and hit quick play. But that should pretty much get you up and running in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Honestly, I think this game makes a lot of fun. It's very fast, it's very snappy, it's super fluid. I've been playing it for quite a few hours now and I haven't had a single crash. So it's actually fair to say that this game in beta is more stable than Battlefield 5 a year after launch. Which in and of itself is pretty much ridiculous. But that's it for today's video guys, if you liked this video leave a like, if it is liked it leave a dislike, subscribe for more content like this, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.